This video is brought to you by AudioQuest, makers of the Dragonfly range of USB DACs. Click to audioquest.com for more information. This week, we are looking at a full width, big box streaming amplifier, the Marantz Model 40N, to which we just need to add loudspeakers. Well, kind of, sort of. <laughs> Today is the second day of what Germans call a Hitzewelle, which is heat wave. And outside, I think it's gonna be about 38 degrees Celsius today. There are no points for doing it tough, either here or say in Australia where I used to live. But this weather definitely reminds me of Australia. And it kind of reminded me of an album that I absolutely bloody adore. And it is by a chap called Ben Salter. It's called The Cat. From 2011. I think you might broadly call this singer-songwriter stuff, but I think that genre makes things sound a little bit twee. This album was produced by Gareth Lydiard, or at least co-produced by Gareth Lydiard of The Drones, and some of it to me, and I mean this as a, as a compliment, sounds like very early Aztec camera, but with a heavy Australian influence. But it is kind of, I guess you'd call it Australian folk pop. But, 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 I think better is, I mean, this is Ben Salter's second album, The Star's My Destination. And I'm not showing you this because of the album, I'm showing you this because of the bonus disc that comes with the, the limited edition version, which is Ben Salter live at the Northcote Social Club in 2015. And that's just him, an acoustic guitar, a tambourine, and he plays a lot of songs from the cat in that set. And it's much rawer. And what I love about Ben Salter is that his, his lyrics are very thoughtful and he can really go from a whisper to a, a roar or a bellow in, you know, in the space of a few notes. And I think that's fantastic, especially when he really belts it out. I love that about Salter's sort of vocal turns. So I would recommend either, either of these discs, the second disc on this one, but also if you really enjoy the, the live at the Northcote Social from this one, Check out Ben Salter's Bandcamp because he has something called Ben Salter Live, which I think was an acoustic set recorded just after The Cat came out. It has some great cover versions on it. Again, it's pretty raw. And I recommend listening to Ben Salter on a really hot day, like today, not in the evening, but just as the sort of the afternoon gets really thick and heavy, because then you can really feel the Australiana I guess if we can call it that, coming out of, the, out of the music. I think it's just wonderful stuff. I can talk about this for a long time, as you can probably tell, but we should really get on with the Marantz coverage. So the 40N sells for just north of 2,000 euros, and the feeling of value for money is right there when you take it out of the box. It's big and it's heavy. And I guess that sort of feeling of getting your money's worth is much more present than it is when you unbox the name Unity Atom or the NAD M10 V2, the little shoebox amps. Like the Model 30, the more expensive Model 30 that came before the 40N, this is what we might call new look Marantz. We note the textured patterns on the front fascia and also the side firing illumination. Unlike the 30, the Model 40N is a Class AB amplifier. And that means we get 70 watts per channel into eight ohms. Also on the spec sheet are Marantz's hyperdynamic amplifier modules. And these are basically little circuit boards with discrete surface mount components that stand in for op amps or single chip integrated circuits. And according to Marantz, these little HDAMs, what they do is they drive down the noise floor and they level up the detail retrieval. If you want to know more about these HDAMs, I'll put a link in the description box below. That means you have to look beneath the, the video window that you're watching me on right now, scroll down a bit, and just above the comment section, there's a, a little word that says more, and you click that. Now, if you're watching this on a TV, 
it means you have to go to a computer or a phone to find that description box because I'll put lots of links right, yeah, right down there. The N in 40N refers to network. That means we're looking at a streaming amplifier. There's no rune readiness here, not that I can tell. There's something called HEOS, which is the streaming system that I believe was first developed for Denon products. Denon and Marantz are part of really the same company. And HEOS, the app, integrates Tidal, Deezer, Amazon HD, but no Cobas. Does it do gapless playback? You kind of knew I would ask that, right? Yes, it does. It does do gapless playback. Now, I think the HEOS interface, it's functional, but it's kind of plain. It's a bit boring. So this is a fine app. If you're coming to streaming for the first time from CDs or vinyl, but it will not wow seasoned room users like me or anybody used to their streaming services native app. It's just too plain and too basic for that, even though it is absolutely rock solid stable, as far as I can tell in my usage. And I'm glad that Marantz had the presence of mind to specify Apple AirPlay 2, which I use for Rune streaming, and Spotify Connect. I'm pleased to see that there is an HDMI arc input on the back of the amplifier. I use these kinds of inputs quite a lot now that I have the Samsung frame. Integration is tight, actually, I might say it's probably a little bit too tight, in that if the last active input was HDMI arc, so let's say I'm watching TV in the evening, let's say that I go to bed and I come down the next morning and I wanna hit rune streaming, when I push play on a rune stream, it brings the amplifier into, you know, into, into life, <laughs> it turns it on, but then the amp also turns the TV on, which I don't want because I'm rune streaming, right? Or I'm or streaming or whatever. So that was kind of a bit puzzling until I looked in the manual and the manual tells us that we can change the sort of the type of HDMI arc integration using some advanced settings on the amp. And those advanced settings are navigated using the, the central circle display on the front panel. And that central circle display is kind of too small to be read from the listening position. You have to get closer to it and it's definitely too small and it's not the right kind of display for cover art or anything like that. We don't even get artist name or album name or artist info. It's just for telling you what input you've used, obviously the advanced settings, volume level, just basic stuff. But don't lose the remote control that comes with the 40N or you won't be able to adjust those advanced HDMI integration settings or the subs low pass filter if you wanna change that. And I have to say something about the remote because it is one hell of a beefy fella. It's, it's heavy. It feels substantial in the hand, which I like. And in some ways it's almost as heavy as the remote that comes with the name Unity Atom. Now that uses Zigbee, so kind of like a wireless, but not Bluetooth basically, um, transmission protocol with the amplifier. This one is strictly infrared. The layout on it is kind of busy because they're trying to cover different components that Marantz make in this. And I wish the, the volume buttons were larger, they're, they're over here. The input selection text is kind of small. I think a lot of people will, will be like yeah, squinting at this. But I am very pleased to see that there is a red hot chili peppers button right there. Very good.
So let's dive in and talk about sound quality. I tested this amplifier with two different pairs of speakers, the Golden Ear BRX and the Vivid Kaya S12, the orange Baba Papa speakers that you see behind me. Now connected to either pair of speakers, the 40N sounds big, bold and tonally colourful and it's a sound that's more dynamically charged and exciting than it is rounded or lush or warm. But as usual on this channel, we lean on side-by-side -side comparisons with similarly priced super integrated amplifiers to kind of triangulate the Marantz 40N's performance. And I would say that the Marantz really channels the, the name Unity Atom's dynamic thrust, but actually, bizarrely, gives a little bit more of that. And on top, it gives us a slightly wider soundstage than the name. Not by much, but enough to notice. And on the tonal and timbral variations of the acoustic guitars that we hear on Ben Salter's work, I would say that the Marantz just shades the, the name Unity Atom in this respect. However, its sort of level of transparency or clarity doesn't have a sort of window wiped sheen that we get from the NAD M10 V2. And the NAD remains the most meticulous of the three amplifiers in delivering the sort of the string plucks with almost, you might say, laser guided precision. I don't normally do this, but personally speaking, this is about me, not you, so discounting your needs, discounting functional variations, things like that, just talking about these three amplifiers in terms of sound quality, I would peg them in this order of preference. Personally, I enjoy the Marantz the most, then the NAD, and then the name. Now, this is, I think, a significant achievement by Marantz because it, the 40N, sells for quite a few hundred dollars less than the NAD or the name, of course. And I say of course, but I'm not quite sure it's obvious. But the differences between our sort of main loudspeaker amplifiers seem to matter less when we tack on a subwoofer, tack on, when we integrate a subwoofer into the system. Because what we're essentially doing is handing off all of the low bass performance to the amp inside the sub. So that the main amp generally, in some cases, not all, doesn't have to do as much low bass or pull as much low bass from the main loudspeakers. Now the Marantz does give us low pass filtering on its subwoofer output. Those advanced settings that I mentioned earlier that you can only access from the remote control. They let us choose, I think, 40 hertz, 60 hertz, 80 hertz, 100 hertz, 120 hertz, so we can choose what, what goes out to the sub. We don't get high pass filtering of the mains though. Now I did ask Marantz or Marantz Europe why this is, and they said basically we don't want to have to DSP the signal that goes out of the loudspeaker outputs. And I guess that makes sense if they're implementing HDAMs, you know, if they're trying to really preserve the purity of the analog signal, which is what I think they're trying to do, then they probably don't want to run it through a DSP. And I respect Marantz's decision not to high pass the loudspeakers. But then I would also ask them why bother low passing or giving you low pass filter options for the sub output, especially when your subwoofer can do that anyway. So maybe there's something I'm not seeing here. So if you know what that something is, please let us know in the comment section below. So this, in terms of subwoofer connectivity, renders the 40N as something of a halfway house between the name Unity Atom, which just relies on pre-amplifier outputs, no filtering, no nothing, and the NAD M10 V2, which has an entire bass management system built in, so it does high pass and low pass and designs the crossover for us. Nevertheless, I added the SVS Micro 3000 subwoofer to the Vivid Kaya loudspeakers using the Marantz. I used the Marantz's low pass filter. I chose 80 Hertz. Therefore, I disabled the low pass filter inside the SVS. So I've got this 2.1 system. And my goodness, what a sound. Absolutely floored by this. I wasn't just playing Ben Salter because there's no low bass information in that. I was playing an album by Y called Alopecia. It's kind of like if you imagine Weezer made a hip hop album. It's from about 2005. I think it is like nothing else I've ever heard. 
I've only got a vinyl copy. It's the 10th anniversary edition with a bonus 7-inch with Boards of Canada and DNTEL remixes for those music nerds out there who want to know. So that does have a lot of low bass. And I just sat in my chair yesterday. I was just blown away by the, the expansive sound that I was getting from this, admittedly, very costly 2.1 system. But hang on a minute, because the more compact NAD M10 V2 has Dirac room correction built in. The more compact name Unity Atom has that amazing volume wheel. And both of those more compact rivals give us full cover art display on their front panels. And the NAD's front panel is a touchscreen. And yet the 40N for Marantz counters with what I think is a fairly key feature for some people and that is that it has a built-in MM phono stage inside the amp. So I could just connect my Riga Planar 8 turntable direct to the Marantz. For the NAD and the name, I usually go via an iFi Zen Phono, about 180 euros. It's pretty basic, pretty solid, but I love it. I think it sounds fantastic. And yet, I think the Marantz sounds a little bit better. It gives us a little bit more detail than the iFi unit. Again, another reason to kind of go for the Marantz because the name and the NAD, 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 don't have phono inputs. The 40N also trumps the name and the NAD on headphone amplification because the M10 V2 straight up doesn't have it. The name Unity Atom has a three and a half mil socket. It's an okay kind of headphone amplifier inside, but Marantz's engineers have put a, I think what they would call a proper, in quotes, headphone amplifier inside their 40N, and you can hear it. You can hear it when you connect a pair of HD6XX from Sennheiser to the Marantz. They're a 300 ohm headphone. And I just think the Marantz does a much better job in sort of fleshing out the sound of those headphones than the name does. The differences are probably a little bit harder to pick between the name and the Marantz's headphone output when we use an easier to drive headphone, like the Meze 99 Classics or something like that. But I gotta say, I still prefer the Marantz's headphone socket even when using those headphones and even when listening to bass heavier material like this very obscure, I think, drum and bass album from John B from about 96, which is a double CD set. And the first, the first disc is kind of like jazzy drum and bass, very easy sort of Sunday afternoon music. But the second disc is a much more sort of industrial drum and bass kind of affair. And I, I prefer that actually, it's, it's more interesting, it's more cerebral I think. Anyway, so yeah, I prefer the Marantz's headphone output over and above the name in pretty much all cases, but less so, but only just with easier to drive headphones. God, I'm really making a mess of this, aren't I? The 40N's absence of rune readiness of cover art display and of room correction, but its presence of very good headphone amplification and MM phono staging might have us refer to it as the sort of the middle ground, the sort of middle of the road functional choice for some people. And so too it's sound, because I think the 40N walks the, the middle ground between the sound of the NAD M10 V2 and the sound of the name Unity Atom. So yeah, it's kind of a, a middle of the road amp, and I don't mean that pejoratively, I mean that as a compliment. It's like a, it's, it's like a happy compromise between two, I wouldn't say extremes, but two other choices. Because not everybody coming to what I call FutureFi wants to go all in on a super compact streaming amplifier with room correction and a touchscreen, or not everybody wants the, to pay for a very, very beautiful volume wheel. And some people are just are pretty old school in their approach to streaming amplifiers. They just want a kind of big class AB amplifier that reminds them 
or recalls the big class AB amplifiers they owned 10 or 20 or 30 years ago. And I think Marantz really kind of fulfill that brief with the 40N. Yes, it does streaming. No, the streaming functionality isn't as advanced as other more compact rivals. But that's okay if you're coming to streaming for the first time. The Marantz is also the number one choice if you're a vinyl enthusiast, and I am. So it ticks that box. And it also allows us to add headphones and not worry that the internal headphone amplifier is kind of piss weak because it is on a lot of other sort of integrated amplifiers. I'm not saying the name is like that, but I'm saying it's closer to that. It's closer to a, an afterthought, whereas you can tell Marantz have actually spent some money on the internal headphone amplifier here. So when I said at the start, like this is a streaming amp to which we just add loudspeakers, kind of, sort of, that's what I meant. I mean, yeah, we add loudspeakers, but we can also add a turntable and we can add headphones. So there's nothing about the 40N from Marantz that I would say is cutting edge or bleeding edge or at the forefront of FutureFi. And that's kind of the point is because there needs to be a spectrum of options and possibilities that talk to different kinds of buyers. Me personally, I'm into the super compact, very sleek looking NAD or the name Unity Atom. But as somebody who still spins CDs, buys a lot of vinyl, plays a lot of vinyl, I can definitely appreciate the more sort of traditional angle that Marantz have gone for with their Model 40N. So yeah, if you appreciate the more traditional angle or the more traditional FutureFi angle of this amplifier, then please give us a like down below. If you like my attitude towards high-end audio in that it takes all kinds of implementations of super integrated amplifiers to make the hi-fi world go round, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. So if you look at the front fascia, you'll see the textured patterns on the sides and also the side illumination that comes basically, yeah, out of the sides of this sort of, I don't know. Right, no, no, let's do that again. But to do that, no, hang on a minute, yeah, one second, let me see if I can hold this up. In that it gives us low pass filtering, but it doesn't give us high pass filtering, which, no, no, let me, I need to look at Nevertheless, I added the SVS Micro 3000 subwoofer that we reviewed why did I have to add that? The differences are probably a little bit harder to pick when you use a, an easier to drive headphone, like the, the big, bulky, hulky, <laughs> is that a word? Um, 